The Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000 is an act of the Parliament of the United Kingdom, regulating the powers of public bodies to carry out surveillance and investigation, and covering the interception of communications. It was ostensibly introduced to take account of technological change such as the growth of the Internet and strong encryption. The Regulation of Investigatory Powers Bill was introduced in the House of Commons on February 9, 2000 and completed its parliamentary passage on July 26. Following a public consultation and parliamentary debate, Parliament approved new editions in December 2003, April 2005, July 2006 and February 2010. A draft bill was put before Parliament during November 4, 2015. Summary REPA regulates the manner in which certain public bodies may conduct surveillance and access a person's electronic communications. The Act enables certain public bodies to demand that an ISP provide access to a customer's communications in secret. Enables mass surveillance of communications in transit. Enables certain public bodies to demand ISPs fit equipment to facilitate surveillance. Enables certain public bodies to demand that someone hand over keys to protected information. Allows certain public bodies to monitor people's Internet activities. Prevents the existence of interception warrants and any data collected with them from being revealed in court. Powers Agencies with investigative powers Equals communications data equals The type of communications data that can be accessed varies with the reason for its use and cannot be adequately explained here. Refer to the legislation for more specific information. Charity Commission, Criminal Cases Review Commission, Common Services Agency for the Scottish Health Service, a county council or district council in England, a London Borough Council, the Common Council of the City of London in its capacity as a local authority, the Council of the Isles of Scilly, and any county council or county borough council in Wales, Department for Transport, for the purposes of Marine Accident Investigation Branch, Rail Accident Investigation Branch, Air Accidents Investigation Branch, Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. A district council within the meaning of the Local Government Act 1972, Department of Agriculture and Rural Development for Northern Ireland, Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment for Northern Ireland, Department of Health, Department of Trade and Industry. Environment Agency, Financial Services Authority, a Fire and Rescue Authority, Fire Authority for Northern Ireland, Food Standards Agency, Gambling Commission, Gangmasters Licensing Authority, Government Communications Headquarters, Health and Safety Executive, HM Revenue and Customs, Home Office, Independent Police Complaints Commission, Information Commissioner, a Joint Board where it is a Fire Authority, Ofcom, Office of Fair Trading, the Pensions Regulator, Office of the Police Ombudsman for Northern Ireland, Port of Dover Police, Port of Liverpool Police, Post Office Investigation Branch, Postal Services Commission, NHS Ambulance Service Trust, NHS Counter Fraud and Security Management Service, Northern Ireland Ambulance Service Health and Social Services Trust, Northern Ireland Health and Social Services Central Services Agency. Royal Navy Regulating Branch, Royal Military Police, Royal Air Force Police, Scottish Ambulance Service Board, a Scottish Council where it is a fire authority, Scottish Environment Protection Agency, Secret Intelligence Service, Security Service, Serious Fraud Office, the Special Police Forces, the Territorial Police Forces, Welsh Ambulance Services NHS Trust equals directed surveillance and covered human intelligence sources equals the reasons for which the use of directed surveillance and covered human intelligence sources is permitted vary with each authority refer to the legislation for more specific information the armed forces charity commission commission for healthcare audit and inspection a county council or district council in england a london borough council the Common Council of the City of London in its capacity as a local authority, the Council of the Isles of Scilly, and any county council or county borough council in Wales, Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, Department of Health, Department of Trade and Industry, Department for Transport, Department for Work and Pensions, Environment Agency, Financial Services Authority, a Fire Authority, 
Food Standards Agency, Gambling Commission, Gangmasters Licensing Authority, Government Communications Headquarters, Commissioners of Revenue and Customs, Home Office, Ministry of Defence, Northern Ireland Office, Ofcom, Office of Fair Trading, Office of the Deputy Prime Minister, Office of the Police Ombudsman for Northern Ireland, Postal Services Commission, Port of Dover Police, Port of Liverpool Police, Royal Mail, Secret Intelligence Service, Security Service, Serious Fraud Office, Welsh Government, a Territorial Police Force or Special Police Force. Equals directed surveillance equals, the reasons for which the use of directed surveillance is permitted vary with each authority. Refer to the legislation for more specific information. Health and Safety Executive, Information Commissioner, Her Majesty Euro Unregistered Trademark S Chief Inspector of Schools in England, General Pharmaceutical Council. Controversy Critics claim that the spectres of terrorism, internet crime and paedophilia were used to push the Act through and that there was little substantive debate in the House of Commons. The Act has numerous critics, many of whom regard the Reaper regulations as excessive and a threat to civil liberties in the UK. Campaign group Big Brother Watch published a report in 2010 investigating the improper use of Reaper by local councils. Critics such as Keith Faz, the chairman of the House of Commons Home Affairs Committee, have expressed concern that the Act is being abused for petty and vindictive cases. Similarly, Brian Binley, MP for Northampton South has urged councils to stop using the law, accusing them of acting like comic strip detective Dick Tracy. The Trading Standards Institute has been very critical of these views, stating that the use of surveillance is critical to their success. TSI press release it has been suggested that the deniable encryption features in free software such as FreeOTFE, TrueCrypt and BestCrypt will make the task of investigations featuring Reaper much more difficult. Another concern is that the Act requires sufficiently large UK Internet service providers to install technical systems to assist law enforcement agencies with interception activity. Although this equipment must be installed at the ISP's expense. Reaper does provide that Parliament will examine appropriate funding for ISPs if the cost burden became unfairly high. Equals accusations of oppressive use equals, in April 2008, it became known that council officials in Poole put three children and their parents under surveillance, governed by Reaper, at home and in their daily movements to check whether they lived in a particular school catchment area. Council officials carried out directed surveillance on the family a total of 21 times. This was in the context of rules which allow people who live in the school catchment area to enjoy advantages in obtaining a place at a popular school. The same council put fishermen under covert surveillance to check for the illegal harvesting of cockles and clams in ways that are regulated by Reaper. Other councils in the UK have conducted undercover operations regulated by Reaper against dog fouling and fly tipping. David Smith, Deputy Commissioner at the ICO stated that he was concerned about the surveillance which took place in Poole. Despite claims in the press that local councils are conducting over a thousand Reaper-based covert surveillance operations every month for petty offences such as underage smoking and breaches of planning regulations. The Office of Surveillance Commissioner's last report shows that public bodies granted 8,477 requests for directed surveillance, down over 1,400 on the previous year. Less than half of those were granted by local authorities, and the Commissioner reported that, generally speaking, local authorities use their powers sparingly with over half of them granting five or fewer authorizations for directed surveillance. Some 16% granted none at all. In June 2008, the chairman of the local government association, Sir Simon Milton, sent out a letter to the leaders of every council in England, urging local governments not to use the new powers granted by Reaper for trivial matters, and suggested reviewing these powers annually by an appropriate scrutiny committee. Especially contentious was Part 3 of the Act, which requires persons to supply decrypted information and or the cryptographic key to government representatives. Failure to disclose these items is a criminal offence, with a penalty of two years in jail or five years in cases involving national security or child indecency. Using the mechanism of secondary legislation, some parts of the Act required activation by a ministerial order before attaining legal force. 
Such orders have been made in respect of the relevant sections of Part 1 and Part 2 of the RIP Act and Part 3. The latter became active in October 2007. The first case where the powers were used was against animal rights activists in November 2007. Equals identification of journalist sources equals, in October 2014, it was revealed that Reaper had been used by UK police forces to obtain information about journalist sources in at least two cases. These related to the so-called Pilpgate inquiry and the prosecution of Chris Hune for perversion of the course of justice. In both cases, journalists a Euro unregistered trademark telephone records were obtained using the powers of the Act in order to identify their sources, bypassing the usual court proceedings needed to obtain such information. The UK newspaper The Sun made an official written complaint to the Investigatory Powers Tribunal to seek a public review of the London Metropolitan Police a Euro unregistered trademark s use of anti-terror laws to obtain the phone records of Tom Newton Dunn, its political editor, in relation to its inquiry into the A Euro OE Pilpgatia Euro affair. The SUNA Euro unregistered trademark S complaint coincided with confirmation that the phone records of the news editor of the Mail on Sunday and one of its freelance journalists had also been obtained by Kent Police Force when they investigated Chris Hune a Euro unregistered trademark S speeding fraud. Journalists' sources are usually agreed to be privileged and protected from disclosure under European laws with which the UK complies. However, by using Reaper an investigating office just needs approval from a senior officer rather than the formal approval of a court hearing. Media lawyers and press freedom groups are concerned by the use of Reaper because it happens in secret and the press have no way of knowing whether their sources have been compromised. Responding to the Sun's complaint Sir Paul Kennedy, the Interception of Communications Commissioner, launched a full inquiry and urged Home Office ministers to accelerate the introduction of promise protections for journalists lawyers and others who handle privileged information, including confidential helplines, from such police surveillance operations. He said, a Euro OEI fully understand and share the concerns raised by the protection of journalistic sources so as to enable a free press. Today I have written to all chief constables and directed them under Section 58 of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act to provide me with full details of all investigations that have used Reaper powers to acquire communications data to identify journalistic sources. My office will undertake a full inquiry into these matters and report our findings to the Prime Minister Euro on October 12, 2014, the Justice Minister, Simon Hughes, confirmed on Sky News a Euro unregistered trademark S Menagan program that the UK government will reform Reaper to prevent the police using surveillance powers to discover journalists a Euro unregistered trademark sources. He said that the police a Euro unregistered trademark S use of Ripper Euro unregistered trademark S powers had been a Euro OE entirely inappropriate a Euro and in future the authorization of a judge will be needed for police forces to be given approval to access journalists a Euro unregistered trademark phone records in pursuit of a criminal investigation. The presumption would be that if a journalist was acting in the public interest, they would be protected, he added. Hughes further said that if the police made an application to a court he would assume a journalist would be informed that the authorities were seeking to access his phone records. More than 100,000 Reaper requests are made every year for access to communications data against targets including private citizens. It is not known how many have involved journalists a Euro unregistered trademark phones. Prosecutions under the Reaper a number of offences have been prosecuted involving the abuse of investigatory powers. Widely reported cases include the Stanford Liedel case, the Goodman Mulcahy Royal Voicemail Interception, and Operation Barbatus. Cliff Stanford and George Nelson Liedel pleaded guilty to offences under the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act in 2005. They were found to have intercepted emails at the company Red Bus Interhouse. Stanford was sentenced to six months' imprisonment suspended for two years, and fined a £20,000. It was alleged Stanford had intercepted emails between Dame Shirley Porter and John Porter. In 2007, news of the World Royal editor Clive Goodman was sentenced to four months in jail for intercepting the voicemail of members of the royal family. His associate Glenn Mulcahy received a six-month sentence. In 2007, 
Operation Barbatus exposed a sophisticated criminal surveillance business organized by corrupt police officers. A former Metropolitan Police officer, Jeremy Young, was jailed for 27 months for various offenses including six counts of conspiracy to intercept communications unlawfully. A second former policeman, Scott Gelsthorpe, was sentenced to 24 months for offenses including conspiracy to intercept communications unlawfully. Three other former police officers and a private detective were also jailed for their part in running a private detective agency called Active Investigation Services. In 2008, four people were cautioned for unlawful intercepting of a postal, public or private telecommunications scheme, under S-1, 1, and the circumstances of the offences are not known at the time of writing. Three people were tried for failure to disclose key to protected information under S-53. One person was tried for disclosing details of Section 49 notice under S-54. In August 2009 it was announced that two people had been prosecuted and convicted for refusing to provide British authorities with their encryption keys, under Part 3 of the Act. The first of these was sentenced to a term of nine months imprisonment. In a 2010 case, Oliver Drage, a 19-year-old takeaway worker being investigated as part of a police investigation into a child exploitation network, was sentenced, at Preston Crown Court, to four months imprisonment. Mr Drage was arrested in May 2009, after investigating officers searched his home near Blackpool. He had been required, under this act, to provide his 50-character encryption key but had not complied. In a further case in 2010 Poole Borough Council was accused of spying unfairly on a family. Although the council invoked powers under Reaper to establish whether a family fell into a certain school catchment area, when taken before the Investigatory Powers Tribunal it was found guilty of improper use of surveillance powers. Investigatory Powers Tribunal the 2000 Act established the Investigatory Powers Tribunal to hear complaints about surveillance by public bodies. The Tribunal replaced the Interception of Communications Tribunal, the Security Service Tribunal, and the Intelligence Services Tribunal with effect from October 2, 2000. Between 2000 and 2009 the Tribunal has only upheld four out of 956 complaints. See also, Human Rights Act 1998. Mass surveillance in the United Kingdom, phone hacking, rubber hose cryptanalysis, plausible deniability, interception modernization program, United States v. Boucher, a case in the U.S. courts which determined that a criminal defendant cannot be forced to reveal his encryption passphrase but can be forced to provide a plaintext copy of their encrypted data, if the defendant had previously willingly shown the authorities the drive's contents. References External links, Regulation of Investigatory Powers Information Center, Parliament Didn't Understand or IP Act, Articles on Aspects of REPA and Surveillance Law, BBC News website, REPA Spy Law Used in Dog Fouling War.